Hello, I'm Tony Gaida, and this is my New York. The man playing guitar is Tom Chapin, winner of multiple Grammy Awards, and he's here today to talk and sing about the persistent problem of hunger in a city and country of abundance. You'll meet Tom next. Why hunger? It's a question that bedevils us, especially in this week before Thanksgiving. Why hunger? It's also the name of a 40-year-old nonprofit group dedicated to the proposition that access to nutritious food is a basic human right. Tom Chapin has been a board member of Why Hunger since its inception. Welcome. Thank you. Great nice to be here, Tony. You. Thanks. Why hunger was the brainchild of your brother, Harry. How did he come to that? Well, it, it's Harry and Bill Ayers, uh -huh. uh, and Bill, of course, is the uh, is a, a talk show host on Sunday nights as well on radio, and uh, and was a, a priest, uh, not anymore. He married his his love, and and uh, but he and Harry uh, uh, met and started talking about stuff and how to change the world a little bit, and they discussed. The thing that bothered them both was the idea of seeing hungry people in New York City you know, on the streets, and began to say, why don't we do, remember the Bangladesh concert, the huge sure. concert, why don't we do a, like a Bangladesh type concert for the hungry and do it at the UN? Well, they worked for about six or eight months at this, it never happened, but in the course of doing that, Harry and Bill realized that even if they did it, and it was a great success, it's like a flash bulb going off and it disappears. The money maybe goes there and maybe it helps, maybe it doesn't, but it doesn't change anything. And it really changed something you need an organization that's going to be here this week, next week, next year, five years from now, 10 years from now, and now 40 years, 40 years from sure. now. And Harry uh, dedicated his life, you know, I'm going to do this the rest of my life. Well, he died in 81, so it's much been too young. much too young. And so other people have done amazing work for the last 34 years. He was a man of passion about his music. Uh, the the stories of his songs and and it, causes. I mean, uh, describe what would that like being around him. Well, I, I I coined a term that the family loved. Two's company, Harry's a crowd, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was really that way. He was his idea was when in doubt, do something. We could do that. Case in point, uh, we're, Steve and I are choir boys in Brooklyn Heights. We're taking classical instruments. I'm playing clarinet, and Steve's playing piano. Your and brother Steve. My brother Steve. And Harry's uh, playing trumpet. And we hear a recording called The Weavers at Carnegie Hall. Seminal record in the folk revival. I'm 12, Harry's 14, Steve's 11. We listen to the record all summer long. It's Pete Seeger, Ronnie Gilbert, Fred Hellerman, right. and, and Lee Hayes. They changed the American music and brought it to America. And end of the summer, Harry says, we could do that. And he gets a five-string banjo, gets the Pete Seeger book. I get a guitar, my first guitar, a plywood K guitar. I took two hands and push the strings out. And we became the Chapin brothers. And, and Harry was the lead dog. You know, he, he had two brothers who were good singers because we were choir boys. Harry never was in Grace Church, Brooklyn Heights. And uh, so he was, you do the melody, Harry, and we'd sing harmony. And for the next 10 years, we uh, terrorized the neighborhood. <laughs> and I've been terrorizing the neighborhood for a long time. This, this is Harry talking about, he's not really talking about himself, but he, he reveals his passion, his intensity for, for active, activism in, in this state. And listen. I think the thing that makes all of us want to be alive is to matter. And the way you matter is care enough about something so you keep doing it. Yeah. He wanted to matter. He did matter uh, in the music world, of course, and in this uh, effort against hunger. Why, how is why hunger? There are a lot of groups trying to fight this. There are soup kitchens. You're not a soup kitchen. But how, how is why hunger different from? Well, it started out different in the sense that one of the wonderful things about Harry and about Bill is their sense of, community. It's not like, watch me do this. Mm -hmm. It's, 
we can do this. And why hunger has this great thing of partnering. The whole idea here is that hunger is caused by poverty. If you're poor, you have to make terrible choices about whether you pay the rent, whether you pay your gas bill, whether you pay telephone, or you eat. And poverty is caused by powerlessness. And so that was the, the great bing light bulb that went off in Harry and Bill. So the idea is how to get not only people to feed people, but to get them to be self-reliant. And, and what are all the whole way through, it's not like we, you know, this, how much money is going to go to hunger in this country? And it, this is our little piece of the pie, and that's your little piece of the pie. No, how can we, how can we help you? How can you help us? And that's been the watchword for why hunger from day one. And it's very powerful, you know, it, it, uh, and it's the reason that uh, uh, people who get involved with it stay with it. And we were talking, my daughter Lily was two weeks old when Harry died in a car accident in Long Island Expressway. She's now 34, so I know exactly how long it's been since Harry died. And that's how long Why Hunger has been without Harry, without that, that energy that started it. But there's all these people who are involved with it, this incredible cr cast and crew, and Bill Ayers, of course, has been one of the guiding lights. What uh, you're talking about in, in, in practice is you partner with community groups, f food gardens, community gardens, p showing people how to provide for themselves, I guess, uh, and helping them to get the resources to do that. Is that a fair Yeah, and there's, there's, I mean, there's, there's many groups, but, but here's one in, in, uh, in Bed-Stuy. It's St. John Bread and, what's it called? Uh, bread and Food, I think. I, I'm, I'm getting the name wrong. But they do exactly that. They're food banks. This is in Brooklyn. Brooklyn, and they, they, and they not only feed people, but they give them now a choice of food and suppose they're giving you a basket. Hey, come in and here's, here are the possibilities. And they help them make sensible choices about food. Then they help them toward, maybe, toward self-reliance. If they need medical help, they'll, they'll, they'll help there. Dental help, help them uh, take courses. To, and, and there's one here in, in, in the west side of New York City. It's, it's a west side campaign against hunger. It does exactly the same kinds of things. They're all a little bit different. And the wonderful, things about, wonderful thing about us partnering with them is you, the local groups come up with wonderful solutions that we can then pass on around the country and around the world. You work with groups like this around the country and even around the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess the philosophy behind it is something, who said this first? You give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Teach a man to fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. Exactly, and uh, not fishing so much now, but 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 right. how to how to grow nutritious food, yeah. how to eat nutritious food. We have we're in a in a place that uh, uh, now in our f whole uh, food economy that uh, there are food deserts in every city in, in America because uh, who's controlling the food, and that's a whole other discussion that we can we could have. And I'm not an expert on all this, but I am uh, totally committed to the idea that uh, this is a solvable problem. My brother Harry said, uh, you know, hunger is, is an obscenity and hunger in America is a total obscenity. This is a country that could feed itself 10 or 12 times over uh, if indeed we shared the food. You know. Let's define uh, the obscenity here in the metropolitan area. We're, we're a week, less than a week, about a week before Thanksgiving and a time when abundance. people celebrate sure. abundance and plenty. Yeah. How many hungry are we looking at in the metropolitan area? I wish I had a, a, a number, but it, it just nationwide, it's a quarter of our children. Uh, it's how many? A quarter of, of our, our children. children have, sometime this month, will we'll, we'll have hunger problems. Some enormous, I mean, and that's astonishing. There's a song I... at Thanksgiving Day With food in the shed for the winter ahead We would gather together to say Thanks for our health Thanks for our hearth And the bounty that grows from the ground With our loved ones near We bless the year That's brought us safely round Well, 
Now we are shoppers, we drive to the market. The farm seems a light year away. Still every November we pause to remember that time-honored old-fashioned day. Thanks for our health, thanks for our hearth, and the bounty that grows from the ground. With our loved ones near, we bless the year that's brought us safely round. changes yes even thanksgiving let's rededicate this old day to helping the hungry the poor and the homeless so all may be able to say thanks for our help thanks for our hearth and the bounty that grows from the ground with our loved ones near we bless the year that's brought us safely round. Very nice, very nice. I got some help from our crack staff while you were singing at um, the latest figures on hunger in this area, in the New York City area, are one and a half million New Yorkers struggle to feed themselves every day. And one in four children, one in four, quarter, don't have yeah. enough food. And I've heard you and Bill and others in the organization refer to the problem of hunger. It's not like there's no food, but a food, but the real, the real issue of food insecurity, not knowing if there's going to be the next meal, and not knowing what that meal is going to consist of in terms of nutrition. It's, it's uh, an astonishing uh, uh, thing for those of us who do have food to think about uh, uh, our neighbors who, who don't. And the food insecurity is really true. And also, kids growing up this way have a real hard time in school, have a hard time learning, uh, puts inordinate pressure on families. Uh, well, you just, you, you know, the, the, the statistics are a part of it, but it comes down to individual families really fighting with this idea. And the idea of your kid going to bed hungry is, is really something that just hits me very hard as a grandpa now. Sure. You know. I should uh, make a full disclosure to our listeners that I've been a proud supporter of Why Hunger for many years, both with contributions and, and working on... Um, their annual campaign called Hungerthon coming up, which, coming up next yeah. uh, next Tuesday. Yeah, uh, on WCBS 880 Radio all day, 16 hours worth of Hungerthon. Tell the folks what Hungerthon <laughs> is. Well, it started with uh, Harry uh, on an FM station here in New York. What was it, 35 years ago or something? And they decided to do a 24-hour Hungerthon, like the telethons except to talk about the information and hunger. And I, I, on many of those, got calls at 2 in the morning, hey, it's pretty quiet up here, come up. Okay. And I'd, and I'd jump across and get in the studio. Uh, but the idea is how to, how to uh, it's our big fundraiser. Uh, and so, and, and the bottom line, it's, it's a way of, of, of paying for what we, the work we do. But it's also an incredible chance to really discuss the issues and, and to give information and get really fascinating people there and we've had great support from people like you and, and the CBS crew and, and uh, many stations across the country have, have picked it up and, uh, and it's also online now and it's yeah. uh, and it's, it's one of those things that when, when Harry first suggested it we said what you're gonna stay up 24 hours and do this and now it's become one of the kind of the fun things that we do every year and busy and hard and just wonderful well just to uh uh, elaborate on the fun. Um, Hungerthon consists of a plea that uh, folks contribute uh, whatever they can, five bucks, ten bucks, um, and it's basically done by going to their website, Why Hunger? But as you pointed out online, there are many uh, items to bid on, and there are sometimes very uh, attractive and wonderful and rare things like Gretchen. signed the guitars. Signed guitars and, and, uh, by, and by Bruce Springsteen and a whole bunch of other folks. Bruce has been a great supporter of Why Hunger. He, uh, and also 
um, get into the dugout of the New York Yankees or, or something, one of those kind of yeah. things. There's all, all kinds, kinds of, of all kinds of things uh, available for bid, including this man <laughs> who true. has a band um, and is for rent if you <laughs> contribute. Uh, at every Tom year, <laughs> every and year. What, and the deal is you can get Tom and the, and the, and the band to come to your house or your uh, event whatever yeah. it is yeah. and what what kind of events have they uh, have you we've played? done all kinds of things uh, my favorites are the ones where somebody has a, a, a favorite issue that they want to talk about uh, for instance gun control or a, a local food bank or something and so they they buy they hire, they hire me and win the win the event and we go and then raise money for their event and do a concert, exactly. and and, I, and we'll come to your place and do a concert, and you, you kind of invent it with us. Uh, and it has to be in the tri-state area, otherwise I'm going to be uh, traveling all over the world doing this. And we've done it, oh, gosh, it's got to be 24, 25 years. I love doing these. Um, it's, it's essentially, most of them are house concerts. One was uh, given to the local YMCA, and, uh, and for all the kids who would never see a concert like this. Uh, another one uh, was up in Westchester, and it was for uh, the local gun control after one of the big, the terrible uh, things of kids getting killed. Uh, another one was in, in Newtown, uh, Connecticut, mm -hmm. after that. So it, 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 you can invent your own, and, and it's kind of fun. Cause yeah. it, so they call up my office. If they, well, you won, they call the office. Well, what do you want to do? Well, huh. what could we do? I don't know. We'll talk about it. Right. And um, my... I should mention my wonderful two guys who play with me, uh, John Cobert, who is the composer of the Baseball Tonight theme song, and Michael Mark, who composed Entertainment Tonight theme song. Wow. And they are my wonderful band and collaborators, and, and they also just donate their time to this, and we do it every year. Uh, just to plug it one more time, it's Hungerthon. It's on um, uh, WCBS 880 Radio next Tuesday, all day, and online, whyhunger.org. You can see all the things that are available for bidding on and ways to contribute if you want to. Uh, you run something else that's uh, very important, uh, why hunger does, a, a, a hunger, national hunger hotline. What is that and, and how, does that, how does that work? Well, this year is the first year and uh, we started it. The idea was if you're hungry and you're in Peoria or you're in Bedford-Stuy or something, you're hungry, you have a place to call. You'd think the government would do this, but they don't. And so Why Hunger started it, but the government started funding it the last three or four years, helping us do it. Mm -hmm. uh, this year, a different organization got the Hunger Hotline. So it, why, why is not doing it this year? We hope to get it back next year because we really, it's, it's something that's right at the core of what we want to do. Uh, and in the course of that, you, you know, you get these incredible stories. Somebody calls up and says, I'm a, I'm a single mother and, and I've got three kids and, and I don't know how I'm going to feed them this week. And I'm in, uh, you know, uh, Bayonne, New Jersey. Where, where do I go? And we had, you know, have this wonderful log of, of organizations around the country. And we could say, you go to this, this food bank and they'll help you or this church and they'll help you. And that's essentially what it is. Uh, and uh, uh, I don't know the number right now because it's changed from what mm -hmm. we had. Sure. But there is a food and hunger hotline that, that, that it still exists and someone else is running it right now. But it's a great idea. It, it, it's just a way of just making the world a little bit more like a community. It's how, how can we help, you know? You mentioned uh, the kind of uh, very energetic support you get from people like Bruce Springsteen who... A lot of celebrities lend their names to a cause. Uh, Springsteen does a lot more than that with this. He doesn't want to lend his name. He, we keep trying to honor him. He says, no, 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 no. But he, he st because of him, we started something called Artists Against Hunger and Poverty. And, of course, Arlo Guthrie said, well, which artists are for hunger and poverty? <laughs> but the name came because Bruce started giving us or giving four, three, two or four tickets to every concert and asking us, so he's playing in, uh, you know, Seattle. And he says, I'm going to play in Seattle. I want to give four, four tickets to a local group that they can then sell, make money. And you could sell Bruce Springsteen's for a lot of, lot of money. So maybe they might make six, eight, ten thousand dollars $10,000. And I'll do, also do a meet and greet with the folks who come in. Hmm. And it became a wonderful way. Uh, and we, we were sort of managing that, that the artists uh, helping connect, again, them with a local group that needed the money. And there's a bunch of other artists who've, who have got... Yoko Ono. Uh, oh, she's become great. Yeah, that's another thing. We, she, she gave us the Imagine, Imagine There's No Hunger, and that great uh, 
John Lennon had this great picture of himself, a little doodle, and she right. let us put it on a T-shirt, and it raised a lot of money for us, you know. And and people have been really wonderful. Why Hunger, of course, started with a musician, you know, with Harry and with us, and then when Harry died, uh, Kenny Rogers took it for a few years and helped really helped out. So there's always been this musical component to what we do, and uh, and I think that uh, the artists against hunger and poverty are, are really artists could say, wow, how can we, how can we do, we can actually help people this way. So there's a bunch of different artists who have been involved. It's a, uh, it's a tribute to uh, your hard work as a board member, to Bill's hard work, to Noreen Springstead, who's the executive director, that this organization um, functions, as far as I can see from the outside, on, it makes do with very little for itself, and makes sure that virtually all it takes in goes where it's supposed to go. We're one of the highest rated ones. Uh, there's a uh, four stars rating, and we've had a four star rating for 12 years or something like that, which means that most of the money goes where it's supposed to go, and very little goes to, to uh, the, the, the bureaucratic craziness. It's, it's, it's a small organization, but we're, we're small, but we're mighty. <laughs> Do you understand, Tom, even after all these years, why in a land of such abundance this problem seems intractable. Uh, it, it's it's kind of like a, a little bit of business as usual. The, the, um, I, I just spent uh, uh, a week out in California and drove up the uh, Route 5 right through all the middle of the great farmland out there. And what was astonishing to me was, first of all, how dry it is right now, but also how there's no small farms. This is giant corporations and giant people growing the food. And, uh, and the way these things get solved sometimes is when you think not in giant terms about what's great for the, the mega corporation who is the food grower who wants to grow 10,000 acres of, of almonds or artichokes to sell someplace, but uh, actually people who had to feed people. And that it's been a long, and it can be a long fight about who controls the food stuff. It also may be a, a question of priorities of our politicians. Uh, something that, that has to make you angry when you read about it or hear about it. The federal government cuts food stamps, has cut food stamps. At the same time, this government of ours, no matter who's in power, it seems to, it seems to persist, it supports welfare subsidies for private jets, in the tax code, welfare subsidies for private yachts in the tax code, huh. welfare subsidies for hedge funds and private equity, that's the famous carried interest loophole that even Donald Trump says is a ripoff. Yeah. So these are the things that are built into our system, well, while at the same time we cut a program like food stamps. I would say that uh, a big thing here is to, again, and it comes back to getting money out of politics, you know, because the big money wins mostly until we all realize that we are citizens and we own the power finally and so the, the it's about making the noise so that the voters voters vote but meanwhile you do your best work and you and you work toward the light and I'm so proud I mean of, of all the things that I do and I do a lot of benefits for various things and and I'm a singer songwriter who sings for adults and for families but I go to you know, go to Why Hunger meeting and, and sit and talk about what we can do and how we can make it work. And it, it makes me really proud. Tom, it's a delight to have you with us talking for, about Why Hunger. Uh, play us off and happy Thanksgiving. Great, thanks. If only, if only fair were everywhere We'd breathe it in like air And everyone would share If only, if only Fair were everywhere. If only, if only, we'd learn to share our bread. The whole world could be fed. There's plenty here to spare. If only, if only, fair were everywhere. Plenty of food, not enough share. Plenty of hurt, not enough care. Plenty of you, there's plenty of me, 
not enough we no not enough we if only if only life was like a game and the rules were just the same for made or millionaire if only if only fair were everywhere the world is so big we're pretty small hard to imagine changing it all but let us begin let us agree i'll do unto you you'll do unto me and someday some someday fair will be everywhere we'll breathe it in like air and everyone will share oh someday some someday when fair is everywhere fair Thank you. Thanks, man. <laughs> Pleasure. <laughs>